spending a lot of money on collecting vinyls could bring you personal satisfaction, but in the end, it really seems to me like a waste of money in a way. So it could be taking it a bit far when you could find other useful ways of spending the money, but if you have the money, I guess you can just do what you want with it. I wouldn't call it a waste, but I would say that you should only do it if you know that you can, you know, support the habit. It takes more effort to consume it. You have to make time to get the record out, clean it if you're really doing it right, turn it over when it's done on the side, you know, and so you really have sort of a, um, a commitment to it. And I think that's the barrier. I think um, if people cared about sound, really cared about sound, they'd get vinyl and they'd go through the, the, the issues of having to get it out and clean it and put it back and all that. Um, but if you don't care about that, if all you care about is just having pleasant background music, then you're not going to you're not going to get vinyl. It's, I think it's always going to be a niche market. It's never going to be like, like what it used to be. Uh, because of the digital world, there is a lot more available to you as a DJ when you combine the vinyl and the digital you know, CD format uh, when you're playing music, especially nowadays. There's a lot of computerization. So a record in essence, or vinyl as you would say, um, you're kind of limited because you don't have the electronics, you know. So if you're doing straight vinyl, there's just a, something about vinyl that you just can't reproduce with the CD element. With a record or LP or a vinyl, as you would say, there's static, there's skips, jumps, there's a whole bunch. So that it's like night and day. Definitely digital is it's like high definition as opposed to, you know, it's like AM and high def. Time is, is one of those things that you have to make you have to make room for. And LPs are they take a little more time because you have to get up and you have to flip the record over. Um, and for me, that's part of the ritual. Uh, I like the ritual. Rituals are okay. Not everything needs to be convenient. I think it's a dying breed because honestly, I mean, I've listened to vinyl before. I think it's a bit more lively than you know your average CD. But then again, it is a bit more inconvenient to hold you know that huge vinyl. I don't know about most people, but for people like me and my dad, it's just, it's nice to be able to do that actually, like I prefer it, it's, it's like part of the listening experience to just sit down and then wait for one side of the record to finish and then flip it over. It's, it's almost like reading an old book versus like using like a Kindle or reading an ebook on the iPad or something. It's a tangible thing, it's in your hands and you can feel it and smell it and see it and a song on your phone is a button that you press. I think vinyl's like a beautiful thing. I, I think of vinyl as being sort of a... Uh, it's retro but in a, in, a, in a way that I think of like hand-drawn painting or hand drawings and paintings versus let's say digital media art. Like there's a certain classic quality to vinyl, uh, an originality, a, a a purism to to vinyl that uh, maybe is lost with some of the, the digital formats that are out there. Uh, ASAP Rock Skeleton. That is like the just the cover art is pretty cool, but when you open it up, it's just like this big mural across the both sides of the cover. There was some amazing album covers. I had a book that was called the Album Cover Album, and it was nothing but these classic covers. Uh, the Kelly Mouse Studios that were up in San Francisco were amazing. The Hypnosis guys that did uh, Dark Side of the Moon, for example. It's iconic. You, you, you don't even need to hear a note of music. All you got to do see, see is that prismatic pyramid splitting that beam of light into the colors. And I, I don't know about you, but I, I can hear the album practically playing in my head. You know, we've sacrificed the sonic quality for uh, convenience, for ease and convenience. And, but that being said, you're not going to hear it, though. A lot of people listen to music through crappy laptop speakers, and they don't care. You know, as long as the highs are there and the lows are there, and they can understand what they're singing. But there, there is uh, a soul, like, 
to, to music that, that is lost through convenience. You've taken the time to choose the record and then put the record on. Um, it, it's, you know, that much more difficult to get up, take it off, go put on another record. I mean, difficult, relatively speaking, but um, you're going to be more choosy. And so, yeah, you're probably going to, you want to appreciate the experience more. You know, you've put more into it. I think it, it's a cost effectiveness. A, a, duplicating a file is free. Uh, duplicating a vinyl, an album is, it's it's labor intensive. It's expensive. Um, the uh, the simple price of producing the thing makes it less cost effective. I would say, depending on the age group that you would ask, uh, you know, I, I would say half of the population would know vinyl, and the other half would say, "What is that?" You know, um, I don't think it's a it's a big uh, you know, it's a big deal. I don't think people are gonna, you know, go, you know, vinyl, oh yeah, you gotta have it, you know. It's, it's a thing of the past. It's like, it's not gonna, I don't know that it's gonna come back. My guess is there are people that wanna listen to music in the car when they're driving somewhere. They wanna listen to music in the house to have, while they're doing housework or working on something. Um, or they want something while they're working out, you know, or, or jogging or running. And so for them, digital music is the way to go. You know, it's especially now with iTunes being so, so popular and even the offshoots of that like Spotify and some of the other digital music services, um, they, you know, that's what they want to do. So I bet you they don't even know anything about vinyl. I, I think that there is a large segment of this population that is absolutely clueless. They have no idea. Uh, depending on the age, some people would say, oh, I think it's something that my parents listen to. I actually, my dad collects vinyl, and uh, I've never really listened to it. I've never deliberately pulled out an album and listened to it. But from what I, from what he says, it's pretty cool. It's a little morbid to think about, but you know, I'm part of, the, I'm the end of the baby boomer generation. The baby boomers are the mass consumers of vinyl, and they're the ones that care the most about it, and they're the ones that keep it going with record swaps and you know, selling their collections to stores and things like that. Um, that's going to run out at some point cause, just because people will die. You know, the generation will pass. And when that happens, um, I, I don't know. I don't know what the momentum will be because I'll be gone too. You know. Um, uh, about two years ago, um, I, I, I found um, my father's record collection, and uh, I was really interested in it. You know, I was really curious about. Um, how it worked, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of mysterious to me how how a uh, you can put a needle on this piece of plastic and it spins around and it makes a noise, you know, it's kind of it, it's kind of I don't know, strange. Uh, yeah, so sometimes on Fridays after school, since we get out early, a couple of my friends, Will and Chris and I, we go to like Rasputin Music uh, or um, like Streetlight Records, and we just go to the record shop and you know look for records. Sometimes I buy records, sometimes I don't. Um, I think it's really cool because that's how a lot of music was originally shared um, through what I know and um, I mean we're definitely getting to, into a digital age and just people who are trying to preserve the vinyl part of music is really cool. I think. There's companies that make high-end stereo equipment including turntables and they continue to make a living at it so obviously there's a, there's a huge market for it and as the Gen Xers and the Gen Yers and all the other whatever they call these people that are growing up now get older and have money, they'll probably want to spend it on stuff like that. And so maybe that will at least keep it, it'll be a low level, but it'll keep it going, you know, through time.